Hello, statistical scholars, and welcome to another episode of Let's Do Some Statistics with Minitab. So, if you have been looking at your chapters for this week, or chapter, not chapters, sorry about that, we've been dealing with a couple different probability distributions. In particular, I'm going to highlight in this video dealing with the binomial and the geometric probability distribution. Um, this sheet of example problems as well as solutions to it are sitting on um, your Blackboard site along with this video. So I'm hoping that this will help you understand the difference between um, doing the two of them and how to use Minitab to um, calculate some of these probabilities as well. Because doing them by hand is, um, what's a good word for it? Hectic? Yeah, let's go with that. All right. So <clears throat> when you're looking at uh, these types of distributions, it's most the most important thing is that you make sure that you're using the correct one. So my first two examples here are about recognizing which distribution you're dealing with. So in reading through this first example, blood type is inherited. If both parents carry the genes for O and A blood types each, there is a child has a probability of 0.25 of getting the two O genes, and so having type O blood. Different in children inherit independently of each other, so each birth is independent, so each child will be independent of the each other. We used to explore the number of children out of five children who are these parents will have with type O blood. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, are there two categories? AKA, is there a defined success and a defined failure? So in this case, we've defined having type O blood as being success and not having type O blood as being our failure. So yes, there is defined two categories for us um, with a success and failure. Then you have to ask yourself, is there a fixed number of total trials we're interested in? And the answer to that is yes. Since there are only five children, we know that there is exact number of trials that we're interested in. Um, and this is the key tactic in how to tell that you have the binomial and not the geometric. Um, geometrics, if you remember, they count the number of successes until you hit a failure. Um, so they're a little bit different in how they, what they're interested in counting and what they're trying to discover with probability. The next thing you want to ask yourself is, are these independent? And yeah, well, you know, different children will inherit independently of each other. Knowing one child is type O doesn't change whether or not the other has a different blood type from it. Okay, last but not leastly, is their probability of success or p-value the same? And for that one, it's clearly a yes, since having each individual child has the same set of parents, and therefore their p is always the same value. So all conditions are met for this first one for a binomial, which is nice. Now, for the second one, we're going to start off, and I'm going to ask my questions a little bit differently this time, just because um, I think it's pretty clear which one this is going to fail. You might guess it already, even as you've been reading it. So let's say you want to know the percent of married people that believe in mothers of young children should not be employed outside the home. You plan to interview 50 people. For the sake of convenience, you decide to interview both the husband and the wife. 25 married couples. The random variable X is the number of people among the 50 persons interviewed who think the mother should not be employed. Now, as you look at this, yes, there is a defined success and failure, the, or the two-category condition is met. So yes, there's a success. It's thinking they should not be employed outside of um, the home, and failure is thinking that they should. Or you could define those backwards. If you think success is they should be employed outside of the home, and failure would be they shouldn't. Um, it depends on what question you're researching, what you might define success and failure as. Um, the next thing you want to ask yourself is, are they independent? And here's where you probably should think that this fails absolutely miserably, because you can't really assume that the opinion of a husband and a wife on something is going to be independent. They probably have similar opinions. That's possibly the reason why they got married. The same thing can be said for friends and family members of each other. <clears throat> Usually their their um, ideas are not independent of each other, not ideas. Opinions. Your ideas are yours. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so this one we would say is not a binomial. It's also clearly not geometric since we're not counting the number of people until we hit someone that um, ha just is in favor of young mothers not being employed outside the home. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's do some calculations. So the first one we have up is this very clearly a geometric because I labeled it with big letters as being geometric, but if you want you can go through all those steps we did a minute ago to determine if it is a geometric. <clears throat> So we're asked the question, hey, there are 20 mar red marbles in 10 blue marbles and 5 white marbles in a jar. We're going to select a marble without looking, note the color, and then replace the marble. You're interested in the number of marbles you have to draw until you get a red one. 
So the idea is you're going to pick and pick and pick and pick until you hit a red. That's clearly a geometric. You have a defined success you're interested in, and you're going to continue to pick until you hit a red. Oh, I need to stop moving that mouse so much. That's a little annoying. So we're going to find the probability that we select a red marble on the first try. Notice that this question is the same as asking you for, what's your value of P? What's your probability of success? So since we have, let's see, 20, 35 marbles in total, and only 20 of them are, 20 of them are right, we know that our P value... <clears throat> is 20 out of, that's a little p, not a big p, let me fix that, sorry about that, out of 35, which I'm going to round this a little bit just because I have no choice for this one, and a mini tab will not take fractions, so 0.57143 is approximately our p-value, and in this case we're interested in the event that our random variable x is, which is, remember it's the number of successes or the number of trials until you hit a success, <coughs> for a geometric is going to be 1. So we're going to go over here to mini tab, and we're going to go up to calc, and there's this lovely selection called probability distributions. That has a lot of selections in it. Some of these we will use in the future, some of them we will not. Um, those of you who want to take calc 2, or sorry, not calc 2, stats 2, we'll see more of these. Um, we are interested in the geometric, not the binomial. Alrighty, so I'm going to teach you something really quick. These first two radial buttons are the ones we're going to use the most. The inverse one, not so much with the geometric and binomial. When we go on to the normal one, we will use that a little bit more. Um, and so event probability, this is always the probability of success for you. So for us, that's that number we rounded earlier, the 0.57143. And then we're going to input a constant. If you have a lot of values you're interested in, you, in calculating for a geometric, you can input them into a column in here and then select that column in um, right here to, in order to get the output of where you want them. You also have to give it a place to store them, otherwise it just lists them all. We're going to do input constant and just do one at a time. Oh, excuse me. Yawned. Um, so for this one, I'm looking for a single probability value. This is an equal to, not a less than or a greater than or a less than or equal to. So for this type of situation in particular, I just want to use probability. Now, if you have a less than or equal to, like if you want to select the marble on the fifth try or less, so five or less tries, you would want um, cumulative probability. So this means to accumulate or to get bunches of them. So if you're just looking for a single value, we're always using this first radial button for an equal to. And then the second radial button is focused on things that have multiple values we're interested in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and okay, and you shouldn't be too surprised. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to tell it what probability I won. I am interested in one try in being successful on the first try. <laughs> Sorry about that. We hit OK. And are you really surprised by the what the answer is to this? Are you really surprised that it's the exact same thing as what your probability of success is? I hope not, because hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. What's my probability of getting on the first try? Well, it's the same as my P. My probability of doing getting the red on one try. Okay, so now let's find the probability that we get it on the fifth try. So we're going to go through the same steps as before. We're going to go up to Calc, choose Probability Distributions, go down to Geometric because that's the one we're interested in. My probability stays the same. I'm still doing a single value of probability, not a less than or greater than or multiple values, and I want to do it on the fifth try this time. I want you to think about this. If you look at the probability of success, it's, a right about, it's a little bit over 50%. So reasonably, you should think, oh, I probably am going to be successful in my first two or three tries. Waiting till the fifth try to be successful seems very improbable when our expected value is a half. So you should be not surprised that this is a little small. Yeah, not very surprising at all. 0 0.0192. I'm using way more decimal places than I need to because I didn't say how much I want around. OK. Last but not leastly, and slightly more beastly, we want to see the probability that you're at 5 or less. So that would be less than or equal to 5. Now, those of you who like to calculate these individually and or using the calculator, it's sort of the same setup. There's the PDF and the CDF. PDFs do the single probability, CDFs do the accumulated, like we were talking about. Um, so for the PDF, you could do A and B, but for the CDF, that's what C looks like. Um, and I want to do uh, less than or equal to 5. And I wrote that kind of funny. If you want to, you can go ahead and fix yours if you're typing stuff, but I'm not going to. Um, and so we're going to accumulate. I want the fifth try or less. So as you're thinking about this, I'm including P equals 5, 
x equals 5, x equals 4, x equals 3, x equals 2, x equals 1, x equals 0. Um, so there's actually four of these that it's calculating and then adding them all together. Run up to calc, probability distribution, again choose the geometric. And here I'm going to just change this to cumulative probability, so it's going to add up to 5 and hit OK. And when you do this, I highly suggest you look at the probability statement they give you. So they say the probability that big X is less than or equal to little x and little x is 5, that's what this part is telling you here, is this value below. <clears throat> the 0 0.985542. And that's pretty high, because remember this is accounting for the event that you have zero tries till you're successful, one try till you're successful, two tries till you're successful, three tries, four tries, and fifth tries. All together added up. So this seems pretty reasonable that it's large. Because even just having one try till you're successful is about half. A little more than half. Okay. Um, I'm not going to include the normal part in this video because we haven't gotten that far yet, but that's coming. Um, so, binomial distribution fun time. So, <laughs> suppose your friend Erin decides that she doesn't like to study, and so she's going to guess on her multiple choice quiz, which has 10 questions in it. Yay! And each question has four choices. So, um, I want you to be thinking as you look at this that, oh, I know what her probability of success is. On each question, she's going to be successful about a quarter of the time. But there are 10 questions. So you have a fixed number of trials, 10 questions, a fixed idea of success that's the same for all of them because she's basically Christmas treeing it because that's what they used to call it back in the day for me is just randomly fill out bubbles um, <laughs> to uh, guess what this is going to be. <clears throat> so it's going to be different and notice it very much looks binomial from what we've described. I'm just going to hit enter so this is down further. Um, all right so given that probability with 10 trials what I want to figure out is the probability that her number of successes is exactly one question out of 10. Which as you look at this, if she has a quarter of the probability of getting them right, you know, one question out of 10 doesn't seem very reasonable. You should expect that out of 10, if she has a chance of one in four, she's probably going to get two or three right, right? Because 10 divided by four or times 0.25 is about two and a half. Okay. So just like before, we go up to calc, probability distribution, and here I'm going to be choosing the binomial, not the geometric. So I'm going to have to change a few things. This is not a cumulative. I'm doing a single probability value. I have 10 trials, and my probability of success is 0.25. And I'm not doing a column of inputs. I'm just doing one, and that value is one. So again, I'm choosing single probability because this isn't equal to. It's important that you understand how to write these statements first because it does make this easier. I have 10 trials, and I know my probability of success is a quarter, and I want to see how likely it is that you only have one success in all of the 10. Here we go. Oof, not very good, is it? Well, it's about 18%-ish, a little over that. All right. Now let's see how successful Aaron will be at getting a zero, because, you know, we're all a little terrified of not being successful, I think. It's a pretty reasonable fear. We want to see the probability that she gets none of them correct. So it's the same steps, calc, probability distribution, GM, nope, <laughs> binomial, oh no, and now I want to see how likely is that she gets none of them correct, and remember, it seems more reasonable that she gets around two or three, so none seems very, very, very unlikely, but there it is, it's less than five percent of the time. All right, last but not leastly, oh wait, this isn't last, she wants to get exactly five correct. So this, this seems like a tall order too, because it's a little bit more than what we should expect. So we're going to go up to calc, probability distribution, binomial, and I'm going to change this to my input constant is now 5. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And that's about the same as getting, it's pretty close to getting none correct. Again, it seems a little unreasonable. <clears throat> and then let's look at the probability that she gets at most four questions, right? So four or less. less than or equal to four. Alrighty. At most four correct. So you go up to calc, probability distributions, we choose the binomial. Now I want to do cumulative probability. <laughs> and I want to see if she gets four or less. Same number of trials, same number of events. That seems a little bit more likely. So we're pretty sure she's gonna fail, right? <laughs> 
shouldn't laugh about that. But you know, there's a ninety two percent chance that she's getting it she's getting something really bad, right? At most work rec, that's like super in D range, right? It's not a good time. Poor Aaron. Oh well. Okay, that's about what I wanted to say about the binomial and the geometric distribution as far as calculating probabilities. The other thing I would warn you against is that since these are discrete in nature, if you're not dealing with a at most or at least, um, if you're dealing with a less than four, for instance, I'm going to just add this in. So for instance, if you wanted to know um, the probability that Aaron had uh, less than four correct. That's a little bit different than a less than or equal to. So since we can't really do um, real close to four but smaller because this is discrete, the stuff that would be less than four would be the stuff like less than or equal to three because stuff less than four would be three, two, one, and zero. So that's what you need to calculate. So just as a warning, when you're calculating these, it's very discrete in nature. So watch your probability statements. They're a little confusing. And these also only go to the left. So they only count things that are less than. Notice that all of my um, cumulatives are always with a less than or equal to in them. So if you want to do a greater than, you have to calculate the less than or equal to version and then subtract it from one. All right. Hopefully that was a little bit of a warning for those of you who are a little confused about how to calculate some of these. And that's all for today. Now I have to figure out how to turn this off because it's always shrinking itself. And done.